Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of rundown new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow. And the five string melodies grooving. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. My Bigfoot sightings that I think about almost all the time, and I'm going to share with you how I had some of these experiences come about and how I got into it, just out of curiosity. Back in 2007, I think it was, my mother was living in Ardmore, and she showed me a newspaper article where some of the ranch hands at the Rock and R Ranch north of Ardmore had killed three hogs, and they went back to get, I guess, four-wheelers that they could take them back to the farm to eat, <laughs> clean or whatever. And when they went back to where the uh, hogs were shot, they were gone. No tracks, no car tracks, no four-wheeler tracks, no nothing. And when I hit that, hey, that ain't one thing. That's a Bigfoot. Only a Bigfoot would be strong enough to carry a hog away. And just months before that, I was looking for a place to go trap hogs on Cash Creek. And on the Cotton County webpage, they had a deal where it said, Bigfoot Research, or not Bigfoot Research, uh, BFRO. And I read through it and learned pretty much, you know, characteristics. So when I went home, I went and looked up on the uh, internet. The Arbuckle Mountains has a lot of Bigfoots in it, uh, especially down around Sulphur, Oklahoma. Now, I made many trips down there. I didn't know what I was doing. I never saw one, heard one. If I did hear one, I wouldn't know what I was hearing. And the in October of 2007, October 1st, I think it was, or the 7th, they would have them get together down in Honabi, Oklahoma, uh, about Bigfoot. So I had been corresponding with some of the members. And when I got down there, I fell in with some of the best researchers, or whatever you want to call us, there he is. Uh, Randy Harrington, uh, he's been around, he's been on TV about 10 different times. Wouldn't surprise me if he didn't make a, somebody makes a movie with him starring in it. He just, Bigfoot, 24 hours a day, and also D.W. Lee. But anyway, the first night we went out, we probably had 20 people in the crowd, went down on the river. Randy, after we sat there about an hour, said, we got to do something to change this. So he picked up some boulders that weighed four or five pounds, and there were a lot of rocks and boulders in the creek there. <laughs> he threw about maybe five to seven of them, and they made a lot of noise. And it wasn't but five minutes. We were surrounded by Bigfoot. We couldn't see them, but they were in the bushes. And uh, two of the wives had got tired of waiting down there, and they went to the car. And they said they're sitting there, and all of a sudden, the car gets pelted with rocks. That's one thing Bigfoot's all about. If you don't get the rocks thrown at you, <laughs> you're not around a Bigfoot. They aim to miss. I've had them throw at me several times. So, you know, that kind of excited me a little bit more. The next night, they were going to go out, and about a half a mile south of where we camped out at Honabi, we went up on the mountains there. The road is washed out now, and can't get back up where they were. And uh, when we got up there, we wasn't there five minutes. 
and it, it was just about almost dark. Somebody saw a Bigfoot back there by the cars. I didn't hear him say anything about it at that time. And we sat down and DW said, uh, you know, <laughs> there's Bigfoot. And we looked toward where the sky is light. It was a new moon. It was pitch dark. And you could see them. They just kept circling around us. These were all smaller Bigfoot. But I saw three as they circled around us. But we sat down, and here's some of the things that we did to keep their interest. We had more than four people there, but we sat down at somebody brought a table and chairs and kind of sat where you could look four different directions. It wasn't 20 minutes until we had Bigfoot close to us. You could hear them, but you couldn't see them. And about another 30 minutes, D.W. Lee's son was with us. And he said, I think I see a face. So his dad had the night vision, and he, he looked, yeah, it is a Bigfoot. Now, I don't know why they didn't pass the night vision around for everybody else to see, to get some detail out of it. All I saw was at least three circling us. But here's some of the keys to it. We had a radio going not real loud, not as loud as we talk, but what Randy was doing was setting up a background noise so they would feel free to move around and not be heard. That and just had a, a very low light lantern. I don't have the lantern helped or whatever, but <laughs> I know we had Bigfoot around us. But Randy always wanted to get a picture of one up. He had been trying for at least three years. And his trick now was to have Bigfoot around him and rush them and get a picture of them as they're leave, leaving away. Well, Randy just happened to be sitting with his back. So we tried to describe about what tree and where the Bigfoot were. And to be honest with you, I was not real comfortable with them chasing Bigfoot. But Randy headed into the bushes, turned on his camera and light, didn't get nothing. Very disappointed. But there, oh, one thing that I, I failed to add was, while we were sitting there, all of a sudden, rocks started getting thrown. They were not big rocks. And we were sitting under a tree with a big canopy on it. So what Bigfoot was doing was pitching the rocks up in the tree so they would come down. We thought it was just acorns falling. And then D.W. says, well, listen, that, that's not the same sound you get out of an acorn. So I come up with the bright idea. This is after Randy had chased them. They come back. Or else they just, they sidestepped him. <laughs> but I started throwing rocks back in the bushes. And we had a rock fight there. Just teasing each other, me and Bigfoot, for, oh, probably 10 minutes. And then D.W. decided, well, we need to go. It's getting late. Uh, since I was an invitee, I did not try to get him to stay there. I was there to learn things you could do. I learned something with Randy with nothing going on. And he pitched the rocks, the boulders, or the whatever, and made that noise. So anyway, the next day they had the Bigfoot conference with guest speakers. And I knew Randy was headed back to Sulphur, Oklahoma. That's up there in our Boca Mountains where there's lots of Bigfoot. And uh, Randy said, I don't want anybody to bother me. Well, I knew exactly which picnic table they run through. So I'd already grabbed that up or a place to stay and hopefully have the Bigfoot travel through there. 
And uh, about nine o'clock, Randy come over and bothered me and said, I want to try something. And what he wanted to do was let's get as deep as we can into the woods where there's picnic tables and play dominoes. And we went to Walmart and bought some. Oh, it, it wasn't the wooden dominoes. It was the ones made out of plastic. But anyway, that made a lot of noise. So we sat down there and played uh, domino for probably 30 to 45 minutes. And Randy was sitting there with the parabolic hearing. I didn't hear a thing, but he heard a twig snap. And we were, I guess, imitating rocks then next to each other. And he knew just about where the twig break was. So when we went over there, the twig broken was a limb that was over seven foot off the ground. Is in a cedar tree. Randy said, oh, that's big red. Big red was the biggest Bigfoot in that community. <laughs> that was kind of neat. He didn't come in real close, but he came in close enough where he could see us. But he did not stay. I guess we wasn't interested to watch or something. Well, anyway, the equipment, we know about the parabolic hearing. You can buy that on Amazon for about $45. I've got some I paid $15 for years ago. I wish I'd bought about 20 of them because I have broke a bunch of them, <laughs> hauling them around. The night vision, you get off of eBay for less than $60. Just get some and get your money back on in case you happen to get one dumped on you that's not any good. I finally got to the point where I was able to buy a Generation 3 night vision. You can take that and you can get a infrared luminator flashlight for less than $10. And I hadn't tried it with the uh, Cat 1 night vision, but with <laughs> but Generation 3, with a little bitty light, I can see as good as daylight for close to half a block. And I'm sure with regular night vision, it's going to greatly improve it. The cheaper night vision with infrared, it's only good for about 50 foot. He <laughs> ain't past 50 foot. <laughs> It just didn't illuminate it where you can watch it unless there is a lot of moon out. Then you can get on to thermal imagers. Uh, these, you're getting in a little bit more money on these. Uh, you're talking about $200 off of Amazon, but these allow you to actually record what the thermal imager is picking up. And it's great for picking up heat, like Bigfoot. <laughs> Hiding in the bushes, you know where they're at. And if they're and if they do have to be moving around, you pick it up. You don't get a real clear picture, but you can tell it's a bigfoot. I have accumulated so much equipment. I go out and spend a night a lot of times in bigfoot territory, and to take all my camping equipment and everything that I've got, I finally bought me a trailer. And that trailer I bought, I bought a wrap to go around it about Bigfoot research and also put it in there. If you have seen a Bigfoot and would like to report a sighting, please call me. And I've had oh, at least 20 people call me telling me about the Bigfoot they've seen. I can pretty well pick out there were two or three of them that I think was they just made it up looking for attention but anyway after sulfur i saw a report on bfro where a bigfoot was seen less than 15 miles from my house well i followed the directions down finally found the girl or the lady that owned the land and i talked to her about me putting a uh, small trailer out there. I'd made a trailer that you could sleep in. And uh, I was in rush to get it done. 
so I wasn't finished with it. And this was kind of tragic how this ended. I'll get to it when it happened. But one night I was out there, the trailer, I didn't have any cameras out. I didn't have a recorder where I could grab it, but I had what I believe to be a Bigfoot come up to the trailer. Now, once you hear him walking through the grass, it's not a walk. It's a pound. You can tell there's a lot of weight behind that step. And in the trailer, I had cut a hole for a TV, and I actually had a TV sitting in there. They do like to watch TV, by the way. I think a lot of times that's the reason why they peep into people's windows. But here I was. I knew there was a Bigfoot outside the trailer, and I couldn't see him, but I was less than 18 inches through a piece of the cheapest plywood you could buy. That's what I made the trailer out of. And uh, I really have never been threatened by one. But if Bigfoot wanted to do some harm, it wouldn't be nothing for him to come through that three-eighths inch plywood. Now, I did have a sighting on that land. One night when I went out there, there was one that jumped out of a tree that was about 10 foot off the ground. Uh, this one was about seven or eight foot. It was dark, so I didn't get a real good look at it, but it's white. And, man, he hit the ground running. <laughs> If you ever see one of them move, it's too bad we can't put them in the Olympics. But I would go out there in the trailer, and I learned one thing. Fort Seal was less than a half a mile away, and every hour they would fly with a Black Hawk helicopter around the perimeter of it looking for things. And... It's right next to the Wichita Mountains. So I am sure that they were picking up Bigfoot on thermal imagers. I never did get talked to about it, but I'm sure at first they had the game department and everybody else out there looking for the person that wasn't supposed to be on the range. Also, it's through a heavy impact area. I don't know how they went through there without stepping on some ordinance. There's also an area where there are uh, oh, stuff they had shot back in the 50s and you know it landed in the trees and in the ground and it would still go off. It's still active. When you go to get a hunting permit out there, they tell you where you don't go in here and that's why. The only report I saw on the Wichita Mountains, which was about four miles from where she was, was up around Elk Mountain, this would have been in the 80s. Someone saw where they had done their tree twist. Still couldn't get any reports on that other than that one being in there. Later, <laughs> I learned there was about eight of them that stayed around in there, and most of them were white. How a white Bigfoot can hide. <laughs> It confuses me. But anyway, if any of y'all are anywhere close to the Wichita Mountains or on Wolf Creek. And since then, I've seen three reports of where they were on Fort Seal. One of them was less than a half a mile from where I lived. And it's down in Medicine Park. I was waiting there. But there's no question in my mind that we had been visited by Bigfoot because one of the sightings was less than a mile from there. But as we go on down the line, I had my grandson. He used to go with me a lot. And we went down to Ray Roberts, and this is daylight. Walked up on a young one sleeping. He was only about six foot tall. Lots of hair. Now. One thing you want to look at on a Bigfoot, 90%, maybe 99% of the videos of people claiming to have a film of them, if you look, what they're calling a Bigfoot is human in some sort of a dark suit. 
look at the neck. A Bigfoot has no neck. His head is just sitting there. Also, you've got your arm length to look at. All the videos I've seen, 99% of them, their arms stop at their waistline. So if you don't know if it's a real Bigfoot film or not, look at the neck, look at the arms. You can make a real quick judgment. Later, we went, I'm talking about me and Darren, the grandson. We went back to Honabi and we couldn't quite get up to work. I saw those three Bigfoot, but we did get pretty close up to the top of it, or close enough. About three o'clock in the morning, Darren said, what has orange eyes or yellow eyes? I forget the color. I think it's orange. I said, that's Bigfoot. And less than 30 foot from us were three Bigfoot. You had one small one that was four or five foot tall, one that was about seven foot, and one monster big one. Yeah, I didn't get but maybe a five second deal. I had three Shih Tzus with me. I had them tied down. Normally, a Shih Tzu is not a vicious dog, but I'm sure glad I tied them down because they went berserk about the time I saw the Bigfoot. I guess they saw it too. And they would have gone after the Bigfoot. Of course, a dog that's very aggressive on the Bigfoot, he doesn't live very long. Once what, they break their back. That had happened down there at Cash, Oklahoma, where I put that trailer. Oh, getting back on the trailer, I can't believe I was so dumb. I had rigged my camera to where I could look 360 degrees in addition to four cameras, one on each side. And I could also pan that camera up and down. The girl that lived there was single. And when I put the trailer out there, I couldn't get down where I wanted to because I was getting stuck. Well, anyway, one night I went out there, and here's this camera. The north wind had blown it where it was right in her bedroom window. Well, that night when I went out there, uh, about 10 o'clock at night, I had... Somebody pounded on the door. It was three Indians. Says, you need to leave now. And I asked why. I said, and they wouldn't tell me. Well, with three of them, I wasn't about to do any arguing or anything else. I got in the car and went to leave. They blocked me. I thought, oh, no, I am fixing to get the tar beat out of me. But I held my cool. And they finally got out of the way. I went home. And the next day, I went out there and got the generator and everything else that I had put up. I tried to make amends with the woman. I wrote her a nine-page letter explaining how everything came back. But still, she would never grant me permission to go back out there. Uh, it's kind of tragic because the Bigfoot, she said, about November, they show up, and she can always tell when they have come in because things start getting disturbed. She had nothing but junk in her yard, and also she had a bunch of fruit she'd bring out there to feed them, just set it out there. But they would overturn stones, old refrigerators, looking for bugs, rats. Anything they could find to eat. I would think a Bigfoot could outsmart a cat. The grass out there was thick. It was over an eight foot tall, and it kind of curled over the top of it. it. had a lot of tunnels in it. I guess probably ten different times or more. I'd be walking through there, and I'd have a wildcat come flying out of the grass running from me. And I would thought Bigfoot would clean them out. <laughs> they, they were there. They stayed there. I guess they smart enough to avoid the nose and the ears and the eyes. But anyway, the three down there at Honobby, Darren said one of them had to stoop to go under a limb. So I said, show me that limb. I went to the car and got a tape measure. And the limb 
was attached to the tree was 10 foot off the ground. Again, we had hit the big male. I don't know if I would call him half a male, but he was a big son of a gun. And it is kind of tragic on Darren because I had planned a week to work southeast Oklahoma, going to the different parks and public forest, et cetera. I noticed Darren was not sleeping at night. Uh, finally, I asked him, I said, what's the problem? He just couldn't get over seeing the Bigfoot. He was afraid he's going to run into something like that again. I said, Darren, you have been around me. You know Bigfoot will not hurt you. He says, yeah, I know they won't hurt you, but if they wanted to, they'd kill you. I had to cut the trip short. He wouldn't get any sleep. And I was more concerned about him than I was trying to see another Bigfoot. Darren would not go with me again. So I lost my little friend to talk to, teach things, show. My ninth sighting of one was north of Beeville, Texas. I can't think of the name of the town. But I'd heard a report of every day a Bigfoot would cross the road at around two or three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> in front of the traffic. So me and a friend went down there. We didn't try to get on any private property. There was a place where we pulled off off the road, plenty of room to park the trailer. And uh, we probably had 10 people stop and ask us, do you need some help? So, nope, we're just up there trying to see Bigfoot. Most of them didn't know that there were Bigfoot around there that offered help. But uh, about three in the morning, my friend, Matt, with it being his first time out, just happened to be looking through the night vision. And about a block away, something come out of the bushes to about the middle of the road. <laughs> I looked down and saw the trailer. And they went back in the bushes. Now, well, five minutes, he come back out. And we sat there and watched it for 30 minutes on night vision. And it's kind of hard to get a lot of the details at a half a block with the cheap night vision. But I would say that this was probably a young male that had been kicked out and told to go find his own family or make his own family. And he was by himself. Shoulders were very broad, you know, for a, a six foot, maybe seven foot big foot. His shoulders would hang near three and a half foot across. And uh, I'd estimate the weight to be well over 500 pounds. I could see arm length, typical big foot arm length down to their knees. And the only reason why we left then, I wish then I would have walked down the road to see how close I could have gotten to it. I'm pretty sure by the time I got halfway down there, he had booked. They are afraid of humans, and they will not. I hear these people all the time, well, big fiddle hurts you, big fiddle eats you, it's full of bull. I used to post on about 12 different pages, you know, about Bigfoot. And on there, one over the time, I would put a post out. Do you know anybody personally that has been hurt by a Bigfoot? I only got two people to come back. And both of them were, when I'm down there in the campgrounds at Sulphur, Oklahoma, or Buckle Mountains, one had uh, caught a girl coming out of the restroom, and he pushed her in the middle of her back and knocked her down, didn't hurt, you know, no scrapes, no abrasions. It just, <laughs> it's a good fool out of me. Get surprised, but one of them pushed down. And nothing, I forget where it was at. Had the same thing occur, except this one hit pretty hard and the guy was carrying, had a backpack on. Got knocked to the ground pretty hard, but the backpack saved a lot of being hit. So, you know, if you post on the pages, put them in there. Who knows? Someone's been personally hit by a Bigfoot. And down around Houston, 
uh, I saw where somebody had put down there's been 36 people missing around this lake where there's a lot of Bigfoot. Well, I played around on the computer and finally I found where they'd gotten their information from. It was a missing person reports in the sheriff's office. Well, you read on to it, 35 of the 36 of the people had been located. Either it was how they run away from the house or they just was tired, wanted to move, or just wanted to disappear two or three days different days. But there's only one that's unaccounted for. So that kind of rules out Bigfoot eats people. But uh, if you look up my name, it's H-O-M-E-R-K-O-C-H. I live in Texas. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dogman, but we had Dogman show up less than a half a mile from where I live. The uh, Dogfoot family was down there. And how I know, I talked to three different people that saw them. Dogman can be dangerous. And there's about four different types. These were the type four that had the face of a hyena. The first girl saw it. She was about a quarter of a mile, and even though she was looking through binoculars, all she could say was it stood about seven foot tall, to her best guess. And uh, two of her friends, they were out in the backyard, just in there chit-chatting around a little fire, and all of a sudden, something come flying out of the bushes and hit a guy in the leg. Well, I figured out who he was and talked to him. I said, what did you get hit in the leg with? He said it was something metal. And there were two more that were on the bicycle about 2 o'clock in the morning. I assume they had lost their license. You know, here's 30-year-old people <laughs> riding bicycles. But one of them almost ran over the pups in the middle of the road. He wasn't running the lights or anything. I guess the bicycle wasn't very noisy. And <laughs> here's these three puppies, dogs, that are standing on their hind foot. He said they were only maybe three foot tall. And he did describe their face as being that like a hyena. And about two weeks later, another guy was coming down the same road and he saw one in the bar ditch. Now, I went over there, but I did not feel comfortable getting out on the ground. I never could find their den. I've got a four-wheel drive vehicle, so I could go almost anywhere I want to. And what I was doing, I was looking for a path that led in and out of the bushes. Now, I later learned that they were up on the New Aces River. That's one of the eight major rivers in Texas. And I had re heard reports of Bigfoot being seen at the Labonte Park. Heard that three different people. Heard about Bigfoot being seen in Odom, Oklahoma. And then I finally ran across a guy that had got a good look at him several times. And all he could describe me is that they had snouts, dog men. Now, I'm not into chasing down dog men, but it was kind of interesting because they were so close to the house. Now, the newspaper article, if you read it, somebody posted it on Facebook. I get comments all the time. I even had friends that I hadn't seen for 20 years call me if they read that. It is all true except for one thing. The reporter asked me how I wanted to end the deal. How I ended up on the deal was I was trying to get them to do an article on the dog man. And when he found out I was in Bigfoot, he weaseled around and wanted to go with me. And he wanted to write an article on it. Was, he spent about three days with me. We went out, looked around. But I didn't have a way to cut the article off. I said, just put on there whatever you want to. And what does he do? He says, next thing I want to do is trap a Bigfoot. Ha! I want to see a trap first that'll hold the Bigfoot and somebody that's smart enough to get one to come into a trap. I don't see ever trapping one of them. 
But my main goal is I've seen nine, and when I go out, I hope to see that number 10 Bigfoot. Now, I'm down here, and it's not East Texas, it's not West Texas, but we have a lot of rivers up here, and we have a lot of public boat launches where I can go spend the night on the river and not have to ask permission from anybody and get the night. You just pulled up there. So far, I've been out six or seven times. And the only activity I've had, I had never smelled a Bigfoot before. But we were sitting there asleep. And I had a nasty smell that woke me up when I was sleeping. And I was with the new guy that I wanted to let him see his first Bigfoot. And I first called him real lightly. Then I kept raising, trying to get him to wake up. I even called him on the phone. He didn't wake him up. But I went up there, and once I started making all this racket, that smell started kind of disappearing. I finally had to shake him to get him awake. And I told him next time, I said, when you go with me, you'll sleep. You're going to sleep with a shocking collar on for a dog. Because I'm not going to go to all this work have you not be able to wake up. But he hasn't gone out with me anymore. That's fine with me. But I've had lots of fun looking for Bigfoot. Don't always have success. I've got a place down by Alice, Texas, where I've got the keys to two wrenches where they're at. You can do tree knocks, you can hear them. But I have been all over that place, made all sorts of racket, had all sorts of lights. And I can't get them to come close. Yet. You know they're there. Uh, one of these days, I'll figure out what they want to come see. Uh, been kind of not going out. I've had a lot of health problems in the last year. But I hope I'm on recovery. And I'm going to give you a tip. I read this, that if you'll only go when there's no moon out there, you'll see a lot more, have a lot more Bigfoot activity than it is when it's bright out there. It was something like a uh, full moon. It was only one-fourth as good as when there is no moon. So I have established a policy that I won't waste my time to go out and come back with not seeing anything, not hearing anything, not hearing a knock, not hearing a hoot. But three days before a new moon and three days after a new moon. If you'll do that, I've had people go out regular, ask them to keep records on it, and they had the same conclusion that I did. <laughs> when it's dark, you'll have activity a lot better than if it's light. I wish I lived a little bit more east, but I chose to move down to Corpus Christi for a reason. Move down here so I could catch big fish. I've done a lot of catfishing so far. I've caught 13 of them that weigh over 50 pounds. And oodles and gobs below that. And it's hard to catch a big fish. The reason why I want to catch a big fish is my dad come in with a 84 pound catfish that was in the bar ditch in Vicksburg, Mississippi. The river had been up and went down, and this huge catfish was in there. Even though it didn't catch on the rod and reel, wrestled it in by hand. I love my dad. He came from a very poor childhood. There's times when they didn't know what they was going to eat for supper. He told me a lot of times it might have been corn bush, and it was probably stolen. But in spite of not even going to third grade, uh, he was very successful in life on everything that he'd done. And I always figure if I can outdo my dad, I'm a good man. And so far, I have outdone him on everything I set my goal out to, except I haven't caught a bigger fish. And down here, it's nothing unusual to hook into a 300 pound shark. We would got one guy that. He's had two of them over a thousand pounds, tiger sharks. And that's what I won't get into. Just 
But this weighs over 50 pounds. Then I will have fulfilled my life's desires. But anyway, in that Bigfoot article, if you don't see it, just look up under my name and under Bigfoot. It's all true, except that I'm not going to trap one. <laughs> I'd say it'd be impossible. But I am down here. I do go out. Anybody that would like to go along need to come along. But I have a Bigfoot trailer with a wrap around it. And I'll probably have in the trailer eight to ten thousand dollars worth of equipment. That night vision was <laughs> it really added up. But it's got all my camping gear, it's got all the food, it's got generator, it's got a uh, microwave. So when I go out, we do have warm food. And when I do go camping out, I sleep in the open. There's nothing I would like more than to wake up and see have a Bigfoot up beside my bed studying me out. It's happened a couple of times. I guess if I sleep out there, live long enough, it'll happen to me too. But uh, anyway, I do a lot of thinking about Bigfoot. Right now we're in the new moon. Yep, vehicles broke down. And one of the guys that were going to use his pickup to tow the trailer, uh, he's got health problems. He had to cancel out. So we'll be out there next month. And down here, I go out 12 months out of the year. It gets pretty warm in the daytime down summer. But during the winter, year before last, we didn't even have a freeze. That's how warm it stays. This last winter, <laughs> it got down to 20 degrees for three days, and this town froze up. But y'all are all welcome to come with me. Uh, I'm on Facebook page. Just send me a message. I've had people fly in to go out. And if you want to do that, I'll pick you up at the airport. Because I'm going out and take you back there when I'm leaving to go home. But anybody got any questions? or need some guidance, get in touch with me. But that's my experience with Bigfoot. And I'm looking for number 10. Hope y'all have as much fun and see as many as I do. But I hope you get it for you. Get some real close looks. But they're pretty close to being human. Talk to you. Hit the call. That's all for now. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run down new horse towns where the church is the backbone loves in the bow. And the five string melodies groove in. Where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah